Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia, hello. Sam Healy, welcome back folks. I like colorful things in Azul. And I cannot lie. <laughs> Stained glass of Sintra is colorful. Have you heard of this small game called Azul? I have. It's done all right, I think. What is the first one even called? Azul. Azul. There's no, like, subtitle? There is not. That would not make a whole lot of sense. Well, no. Some games can have a subtitle when they first come out. Yeah. Well, they might for the upcoming printings, now that they've got more than one, add a subtitle. But they, it's, so far, it's just called Azul. Azul is one of the most popular. <clears throat> Azul is probably the most popular game to come out in the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. For sure. Has sold hundreds of thousands of copies. It's a tile laying game. This is a, not a tile taking game, and you're putting them, what was it, like a bathroom tile or a kitchen tile? <laughs> no. I just keep saying bathroom tile, but it wasn't. I think that was a joke I made for which I got panned. Yeah. Uh, but um, no, they are uh, azulejos, and you are tiling walls with those. Got it. Okay. But this one is stained glass, which yes. has a greater appeal to me because I just think stained glass is a cool theme. Cool. Mm -hmm. But is it like Azul? Stained glass of Sintra. On your turn, you are going to do one of two things. You are going to either take glass from one of the factories and add it onto your display, your window, or you are going to reset your worker to the very beginning here. Right now they are already at the beginning. So for example, on my turn I might pick one of the locations, let's say this one here, and I would have to take all of one color. So I'm going to choose to take both of these yellow pieces of glass and the leftover ones fall to the factory floor. I'll put these anywhere I want to, like there. However, if I was placing them anywhere past where my worker is, then my worker would adjust to match the pane that they are working on, and I can never play glass to a spot that is behind my worker. They always will advance, or if I choose to for an action, I can reset them so I can work on previous things. So I might do just that and leave them right there. Then my opponent would go, in this case we're looking at a two-player setup, let's say my opponent takes these two, these fall to the factory floor. Then it comes back to me. Well, I might take these two here, have these fall to the factory floor, move my worker, and place these right here. This is going to continue until something is fully filled. So, for example, later on, let's say uh, my opponent chooses now to take these two blue ones from this factory, these falling to the factory floor, and then it comes back to me. I'd really like to take these two dark rose glasses, uh, I am going to choose these from the factory floor. The first person to do so is going to be the star player for the next round, but I'm also going to suffer a penalty for breaking glass, so I'm going to move down one tick on this track here, and I am going to put these right there. This would also apply, by the way, let's say my opponent takes these, it's my turn again. This would also apply if I ever take glass, and I cannot add it to one single uh, pane in my window. Anything that I cannot add is going to get thrown over here into the broken glass tower. And I also have to move down for that. However, I did finish that. So now I'm going to choose one of these. I'm going to move it down to this top spot. The rest will simply be thrown away to be cycled back into the bag if necessary later on. And I am going to score victory points. The first thing I score for is the points below that spot that I just filled and any spots to the right that have already one piece of glass at least in them. So three victory points for me. However, if this had been previously built there, I would get those three and one more point for that. I also would get bonus points during the first round if any of the pieces of glass I used are yellow. And then in the second turn, if they are blue, and so on, at the end of the round, this is simply going to be removed, thrown away, to again be cycled back into the game at a later point. Once I've done this, I'm going to take this working tile, I'm going to flip it to the back. 
which gives me a new set of uh, actions there, a new color choice. And once that's filled, again, I am going to, I'll just steal one from here for now. Once that's filled, then I put in the second spot, I'll score just like I did at first. And then this will actually be entirely removed from the game. This is going to continue with you again taking glass or resetting your worker to the beginning of the track until you've played through these six rounds. At the end of those six rounds, you are going to lose victory points depending on how far down this track you move, that is for breaking glass and for taking the start player token, and you are going to gain bonus points based on either this or this corner over here if you're playing on the A side or the B side of the board. On the A side, you're going to get bonus points for every piece of glass you have around that diamond there, 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 and there. So in this case, around that diamond, I have two pieces of glass. That is worth, uh, to me, three victory points. If I had three, like so, I would get six victory points. If it's completely surrounded, I get ten. On the B side, it's slightly more complicated. On the B side of the board, I am going to get victory points uh, by adding up the number of completed windows, i.e. empty spots, and having that multiplied by whatever one color I'd like that is down there. So again, let's say I did this and this, and let's say I did that and that in my play. I am going to get a bonus uh, set of points equal to two times four for eight bonus points. That's basically it. In between rounds, I would refill these factory floors. We would put the token for the star player back in the center. We would reset this and we would go again. Get the most victory points. You are the winner of the game. And that's how you play Azul Stained Glass of Sintra. Okay, so the, the first thing people are going to ask, if I already own Azul, do I need to get this? That's a good question. Uh, I need an answer. I think it depends on uh, what kind of gamer you are. And I think ultimately it also depends on what you, would, you, would, you were hoping for in an Azul sequel, if one ever came out. The first one I would say is a simpler game. And if I was teaching this to a non-gamer, or a light gamer, let's call it, I would still default to the original release. This is for someone who liked Azul and thought, you know, I could stand to have a little bit more going on in this game. I think this sequel gives you that. It's not suddenly a heavy game, but there are new decisions in play here that are interesting, and I do like those. I think a non-gamer could be able to still grasp this one. Well, oh, I agree with that, but I would still fact, default to the original if I was teaching one ah, or two. I've taught this to some... <clears throat> one who did not ever play the original one and doesn't play many games and they, they, they were able to understand mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you know one, it's really easy to teach the other one. Agreed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're just basically saying, okay, it's just like this and now what you do with the tiles is different. That's basically it. That basically taking the tiles is almost the same thing. Yes. Yes. The central, the central mechanism there with drafting of the tiles really is the same. Although this game with the two scoring methods, you do play a lot differently, I think. I think it does. And I think the new action in it that allows you to, you know, quote unquote, break the rhythm of the game in which you know if when I draft tiles, you will then draft. And then the third player will draft. And then I will draft. The fact that you can reset your worker now throws that rhythm off balance, which is great. You can no longer count on... Oh, they're going to take that group, they take that group, and I'm left with this. I can take that. That's okay. That's going to work out. That might that might not add up anymore. Right. I think that's extremely good. That's probably my favorite thing in it, the fact that there is now an action which is not based on taking tiles. That's probably... You know what? You just hit the nail on the head for me, I think. What? That's why I don't like Azul. Because mm -hmm. you can literally get stuck with something and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, I yep. love that part of the zone. Especially in a two-player game. That's fixed in this. Mm -hmm. Because you can reset your worker and say, I'm not taking that. Of course, they could also reset theirs. True. If they're ready for that, sure. But yeah. it, that again, that sort of uh, breaks down in a multiplayer game if it's more than two. Mm -hmm. And um, 
it's also interesting that sometimes you wish you could take tiles and instead have to reset. Yeah. Oh, right. that's a real pain in the neck. <laughs> you know, that's that new action is just clever. You know, it's a new mm. limitation. It's a entirely mechanical limitation. But it's another pressure point. Yeah. That works well. well what do you guys think about the theme slash components? Uh, well, I, I, uh, I like the theme. I, I mean, I did not... <sighs> I didn't not like the theme of Azul. Mm -hmm. I wasn't captured by it. But stained glass looks cooler to me than a mosaic. Well, mm -hmm. like in real life, I'll go, if someone says, there's a really cool stained glass window, I'll be like, ooh, let me see it. If someone says, there's some neat tiling in the over here on the wall, I'll be like, yeah, okay, I'll get around to that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I don't go see one. Uh, yeah. I think uh, as far as the component quality is concerned, I think it's, um, eh, I don't know, if you're a diehard Azulist, uh, then I think you're probably going to say that this is a downgrade. But I think this is fine for me. Uh, I like the translucent pieces a little bit better than the Bakelite pieces that come in the original one. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the colors pop better on this. And this is a prettier game, in my opinion, than Azul was. So um, I think it's an upgrade as far as I'm concerned. And I think for me, it, uh, it grew on me. I'll say that. At first, I thought, you know, I don't like these pieces as much. Mm. There is not as much variety on the surface because, again, they're translucent. So the original ones are either a solid color or they have a little printing on them. But they really grew on me. They look great. And the fact that they are indented and have a, a you know, sort of a pattern indented into the plastic square. Yeah, scalloped out. Yeah, it just, it looks great. They, they, they pop on the table. I agree with Z. I, didn't, I wasn't a big fan, but I think Plan B is almost a victim of their own success. Sure. Their stuff looks so good that if it looks slightly not as good, people, oh, it's garbage. <laughs> this game is so much better than most others. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, it looks good. And also, since you're grabbing these and throwing them around a lot, you know, especially into that very non-necessary <laughs> broken glass container. But it's cool to have it, right? Yeah. yeah. That's Honestly, that's the only component I thought was ho-hum. That tower yeah. is flimsy. The, the piece of the cardboard you put inside of it to sort of give it rigidity and, and leave it standing. It's not very rigid. It's not. And it does it when you do tip out the tower back it into the bag, out. it might flop out. Yeah, that's the might. only thing I... It's like a dexterity game to not have it fall out. Yeah, that's the only <laughs> thing I don't like, actually. If that piece is superfluous, I mean, you could just set them aside, you know. Yeah. Just like you did in the original. I will give them huge props in this game that they took time and saying, hey, if you can't differentiate the colors, here's how to do it. On the back of each of the uh, tokens, you put the different tiles in different spots if someone's colorblind, so they know which ones to grab. Mm. And it, there's like a little guide in case that you can't tell the difference between a color, it shows you exactly how to. I thought that was a neat thing. That's, That's nice. cool. It's a good touch. So if I own Azul, do I need this one? No. So, you don't? I, you don't ever need another game. Okay, 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 okay. But okay. <laughs> yes, I agree. What I mean is, do we recommend this if you already own Azul? I could easily see this replacing the original. I don't know if I would keep both. I wouldn't keep both. I could see this be the better one for me specifically, which again goes back to who are you going to be playing with? If you are, again, teaching the game to a lot of new people, or people uh, you know, consistently, then the first one might be a little easier. Mechanically, it's, there's no question. It's easy. There are fewer mechanisms, fewer moving parts. If you're a gamer and you liked Azul and then grew tired of it perhaps a little quickly or you thought, okay, but this isn't really giving me the, the legs I was hoping for, I could see this replacing that. You're not going to keep both, perhaps, but this is... You know, I, I find it, uh, you know, the central mechanism is just as engaging as in, as in the original because it's largely the same, but the new stuff here is solid. This is, in my opinion, a better game. I agree with Z. I, I give it a thumb up. I like it better than the first one. I thought the first one was good. I think this one is also good, slightly better for me. I wouldn't want to own both at all. I think they're way too similar for right. me. The right. scoring is a little bit different. But I like this theme way better. So even if it, w even if this one was slightly worse, which I don't think it is, I still might prefer it. Uh -huh. Because I like the theme that much more. Interesting. Well, I'm going to give it one and a half uh, panes of glass up. I, uh, I do like it. I'm a fan of Azul. I have the original, in fact. And I, I like I said, this is a, a very strong second offering. 
enough of the same and enough different to be a worthy grab, I would say. I'll give it also a thumb and a half up. Um, not a full two thumbs, but uh, because it's not really, doesn't really follow within my wheelhouse of games that I really enjoy, mm -hmm. which is why it doesn't get the two, but I'll give it a thumb and a half because I do like it much better than the original uh, because of the reason stated earlier with, uh, it gives you that out of not having to take something if you don't right. want to. Um, and it provides more strategic possibilities, I guess you could say, with uh, choosing uh, to have to reset your worker and that type of thing. So I do enjoy it. I think it's a better game than the original. I like it better. Uh, so, yeah, thumb and a half. Well, there you go. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Thank you. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks.